Did you know there's a one-of-a-kind Italian motorcycle from 1947 that looked like a spaceship on two wheels and had wheels that were the suspension? Yeah, you heard that right. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever looked at a motorcycle and thought, wow, this looks like a space capsule had a baby with a fish and then enrolled it in design school run by aliens? No? Then you've clearly never met the 1947 Moto Major 350. The only motorcycle in the world that looks like it should come with its own soundtrack by Ennio Morricone and be driven by a Bond villain with a pilot's license. I'm Timmy, your guide to weird wheels and wacky engineering, and this is Timmy Tiny Wheels. Before we start our descent into this Italian fever dream, smash that subscribe button like you're trying to wake up your lazy neighbor from his nap on the hood of a Fiat 126. Now let's go! So, here's the story. It's 1947. Italy's still shaking off the dust from World War II. The pasta's rationed, the roads are full of potholes, and Fiat's like, hey, what if we turn some of our leftover airplane ideas into a motorcycle that looks like it was drawn by a kid who just discovered crayons and sci-fi? Enter Salvatore Mallorca, an aeronautical engineer from Piedmont with dreams bigger than the average scooter seat. He used to build landing gear for planes. Now he's building motorcycles that look like they are landing gear. Fiat, being Fiat, says, Sure, Salvatore, here's a bunch of metal and some aviation nerds. Go nuts! Backed by Air Italia, the aerospace arm of Fiat, and powered by Optimism, Espresso, and leftover war aluminium, the Moto Major 350 was born in the labs of Turin. It debuted at the 1947 Milan Spring Fair, and legend has it people didn't know whether to ride it, salute it, or sacrifice a goat to it. Salvatore didn't work alone. He teamed up with Angelo Blatto, an engine wizard from the 1920s and 30s who made motors for brands nobody remembers but sound cool on a resume. Quikla, Augusta, OMB, you know, your grandpa's favorite forgotten brands. And the goal? Simple. Create the motorcycle of the future. One that would make regular bikes cry into their oil pans. A two-wheeled dream machine for progressive riders and car owners who are one pothole away from giving up their Fiat Topolino. Okay, now let's talk specs. Because even if this thing looks like a giant sardine can with handlebars, it's still got some serious mechanical meat under the tin. The engine was a 349.3cc vertical single-cylinder four-stroke. Not huge, but enough to get you across town and into someone's sci-fi novel. It had a turned steel cylinder, an aluminium head, and put out 14 horsepower at 5,200 revolutions per minute. I know, not exactly a rocket, but for 1947, that was like giving a Vespa a gym membership. It used a Del Auto carburetor, a battery coil ignition, and get this, it had forced air cooling by a fan mounted to the crankshaft. That's right, they literally stuck a fan on it like it was a ceiling fan with a job interview. That idea came straight from aviation and probably confused every mechanic from Naples to Naples, Florida. Transmission? We're talking four-speed foot shift with a dry multi-plate clutch and a shaft drive with bevel gears. No chains, no belts, no whining, just straight up, I'm an airplane in disguise energy. And yes, the Kickstarter was removable because nothing screams elegance like popping off your leg lever and tossing it in your jacket pocket like a magician. Now for the suspension, or rather, the lack of it. No front fork, no rear shocks. Instead, this genius piece of engineering used elastic wheels. No joke, each 19-inch wheel had 24 rubber blocks sandwiched inside to absorb shocks like tiny little gym rats doing squats. The result? It could flex 2 inches, 5 centimeters vertically with no side wobble. I mean, who needs springs when you have rubber donuts from space? Steering was handled through a spherical hub and rods, which is basically how alien spacecraft probably maneuver. You turned the handlebars, which slid in a slot through the bodywork like some kind of steampunk slot machine, and the front wheel pivoted inside the body like it was trying to escape its shell. And the body? A steel monocoque. That's right, the body was the frame. One smooth aerodynamic shell that made it look like it was designed in a wind tunnel by dolphins with art degrees. Only the headlight, handlebars, and bits of the wheels stuck out. Everything else was tucked inside like secrets in a politician's closet. 
The Moto Major 350 weighed about 150 kilograms, 330 pounds, with the engine alone taking up 43 kilograms of that. It had a 13-liter fuel tank, 3.4 gallons, placed under the seat, because apparently the designers thought, hey, where else can we hide stuff? It could reach a top speed of 105 kilometers per hour, about 65 miles per hour. There's no official fuel consumption listed, probably because this thing was never road tested long enough to bother measuring it. It was too busy being gawked at on display stands like the Mona Lisa of moto weirdness, and only one was ever made. Just one. No production run, no second prototype. It was the unicorn of motorcycles, and unlike my neighbor's crypto project, this one actually existed. I'll be honest, I think the Moto Major 350 deserves some love. Sure, it looked like a rejected submarine missile and had tires made of trampoline parts. But you can't deny the sheer courage it took to build a machine like this in a world where people were still rebuilding houses. It may not have become the future of motorcycles, but it absolutely was the dream of one man with aviation fever, post-war ambition, and a screw loose in all the right places. Thanks for watching Timmy Tiny Wheels. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell before your Wi-Fi cuts out like my neighbor's common sense. See you next ride, folks.